Do you have an old china cabinet sitting in your home just collecting dust because you don't know what to do with it and you don't even have fine china to put in it? Well, that would be me too. Although I still do have my fine china, but I don't use it very much and I certainly don't put it in my china cabinet. And yes, my china cabinet was beige and ugly and collecting dust. So I decided to revive it. And if that is the same situation for you, you have stumbled upon the right video to show you a fun, fresh way to breathe some new life into that china cabinet or really any piece of furniture you have laying around your house. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to create this beautiful blue, old world, French farmhouse, shabby chic finish, complete with stenciled background, and even some fun ideas on what to put in your newly painted china cabinet. myself I'm Heidi and you've reached my YouTube channel for Revive Heart and Home where, where it is my goal here to help you decorate your home in both eco-friendly and budget-friendly ways so before we get started um, take a look around orient yourself with all of my content and if you like what you see here uh, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any other tutorials on everything from furniture painting to decorating and everything in between so let's get going Grab that clean slate and start cleaning. This is the ugly before. You'll want to take that ugly before and paint on a coat of your favorite color of one step paint like I did here. And you'll want to choose a color that you want to paint through um, and you'll see in a further step uh, why that is important. So make sure that you pick something that is in line with the palette of the overall project. Okay, this is my favorite ingredient, cracked gesso, and this is how thick you want it to be, about the consistency of sour cream, and you'll mix it up on a two to one ratio. Then when it's ready, you are going to spread it on 100% coverage of, of your entire piece in the cracks and crevices and all over. I like to do a thin coat first, like you see me doing here let it dry I usually like to let it dry overnight and then I go back and apply a second thin coat now it depends on what look you're going for but um, it will give you texture and if you want a lot of flaking uh, you can even add a third coat okay once that's dried take a fine grit sanding block and sand it between each coat and you see those ridges right there you'll want to sand them down so it's smooth to the touch. Now the fun part, you'll mix up your milk paint at a one to one ratio with water and you'll gently start to apply it. Now for the purposes of this video, my piece is upright, but you see how it dripped right there? If at all possible, lay your piece uh, on its back and then paint. You'll continue to apply it, uh, let it dry, and if you want to apply a second coat, I would recommend doing so. What's what distressing, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Basically, it's removing paint with um, a sable sponge and some water. Now, um, what you'll want to do is take your sable sponge and cut it in half like you see me doing here and use the inside, not the outside, to remove your paint. You'll want to soak it first in your water, rinse it out, and then you have another container of water for rinsing your sponge after you uh, remove some paint. So dip it in, get it all nice and wet rinse it all out and then gently start removing some paint in the corners and on the edges that protrude or anywhere where natural wear and tear uh, would be seen on some furniture. Sometimes I like to uh, pound, sometimes I drag my hand and sometimes um, I apply uh, varying pressures to get um, uh, more off. 
After several passes, you'll want to rinse out your brush. Okay, now look at the back of your china cabinet and many times you'll find that it is just tacked in place like it is here. So I took a crowbar and removed those tacks and then pulled off the back. Then I got my favorite birds stencil and the paint color, which here is Brooks Gray, my favorite. A foam roller, uh, you'll definitely wanna use a foam roller, not a regular brush. And you will want to measure um, and find your center point of your surface and start from that point rather than working from left to right. Otherwise your stencil will be off center. Go ahead and remove your stencil and a place right smack in the middle like I'm doing here. Push it down with a good amount of pressure and you are ready to paint. You'll roll your um, foam roller in with a little bit of paint and just start rolling. After you use your stencil once, I would go ahead and rinse it out, let it dry or pat it dry with a lint-free rag and then repeat. You can see here the stencil is intricate and very detailed and all those great details are now showing through. Now we're gonna add some gold leaf detail to make it look just spectacular. You'll take your gilding size and an artist brush and just put it in very lightly in all the uh, fine details of your piece or on the ridges of any scroll work or carvings and you'll let that set up for about 15 minutes. Then you're gonna take your gold leaf, pull back that orange uh, tissue paper, fold it over so you don't actually touch the gold leaf with your hands and then gently uh, press it into uh, your surface and burnish it with your finger and then pull it off. Then you're gonna take a stiff bristled brush and just uh, wipe away any excess. Okay, we're almost ready to see the big reveal, uh, but before we do, I just wanna thank you for watching all the way to the end. And I do wanna acknowledge that I moved through some of those uh, steps fairly quickly and that's because I have whole entire videos uh, dedicated to just some of those things like gold leafing, gilding, um, and the milk paint gesso combination. So be sure to head, head on over to my channel um, and check out the playlist section and some of those more detailed uh, basic skills are located in the basics playlist. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. And um, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that all of the supplies you will ever need for this tutorial and many more are located in the description of uh, this video. So be sure to follow along. Uh, thanks and let's see what we did today.